Released in 2022, this unlicensed 1-6 scale Hardy Daytona by Game Toys was sold either as a standalone or as part of a set with their cloud figure. And for those who are getting one of these separately, do keep in mind that these gripping hand parts are not included in the standalone version. Game Toys called this variant Style B, as indicated by a sticker on the shipper box. And since I got this together with cloud as a set, I thought mine would have no stickers. But lo and behold, the sticker on my box reads Style C, batteries not included, though the hand parts did turn up as advertised. By the way, if you haven't already, please check out the review for the Game Toys Cloud with the link in the description. That figure is the highlight in my collection. In any case, Game Toys didn't put in any extra flares on the packaging this time. As soon as you open the shipper box, you're already at the foam inserts. Starting all the way from the front, the imposing wheel guard, front fender, and suspensions are beautifully sculpted. There's even a little splash of dirt painted under the fender. The tire is made of hard plastic, which is a cost-effective way to make sure it stands the test of time. Moving up to the headlights and fairings, all the panels here have that proper glossy finish. The details on the two front intakes are also very faithful. And this level of consistency carries all the way to the rear seat cowl cover. The seat itself is also made of hard plastic, with these sculpted leathery patterns, which once again eliminates the concern for deterioration. Despite its intricate appearance, the engine is completely sculpted on both sides, so you don't have to worry about knocking anything loose by accident. Oh, and the dust splatter is candidly peppered here too. The only parts that feel flimsy are these foot pegs and shifters. They are strong enough for Cloud to rest on, but the base panel feels a bit soft to the touch. And you can count on Game Toys to track down even the tiniest details, such as the bottom fence and fairing, also with that proper amount of dust splatter. I really like these heat marks and weathering across these elegant exhaust pipes, complete with these game accurate vents on the mufflers. And finally, we reach these massive dual rear wheels with a set of bona fide rims. The tires are once again sculpted in hard plastic, and they can spin independently from the other. Speaking of moving parts, there are plenty to be found on this Hardy Daytona. The handles were separately packaged, but they easily slide right into the forks. There's a wide range of swing and pivot action, thanks to the three-point articulation structure. The movable clutch and brake levers make it very easy to install the hand parts. This bike weighs in at about 2.5 kilograms, or about 5.5 pounds, and this heft really shows with that slight bit of flex on the front forks. There isn't a whole lot of turning radius here, let alone having to watch out for the handles bumping into the fairings. Oh, and before I forget, there's a collapsible gauge hidden just above the headlights. As far as I'm aware, Cloud never actually used this in the game. It's a feature that's borrowed from the PlayArts Kai version, and it's not the only one, because the rear wheel design is also very similar. The base of the wheels is attached to this axle that enables a sideways spin, and by that I mean it can turn completely around. Together with a meager turn on the front, you can actually get a pretty good lean on this bike. And lastly, there's also this super stiff die-cast kickstand. The bike can actually stand and tilt without it, but you can extend this to strengthen the tilt a little bit more, especially if you want to plank Cloud's foot down on one side. And now on to the lighting features. If there's one thing that Game Toys really dropped the ball with this release, it's the lack of an instruction manual. The battery type is not indicated on the compartment, lid, or anywhere for that matter. I couldn't find anything online either, so I had to call in a fellow collector friend of mine, who had the expertise to identify the battery type almost immediately. It turns out you need three of these LR44s, which may also go by a number of names depending on your locale. The lamps are appropriately luminous, though the bar-style rear brake lights were lost in translation. But given that everything is looking so spectacular, this inaccuracy is far from a deal-breaker for me. Even the speedometer gauge in the middle can light up too. It's really just a blue light bulb behind a sticker, but I'm glad it's there. For the size comparison, the Game Toys Cloud fits perfectly on this Hardy Daytona as you might expect. Cloud can't lean forward as far as he did in the game, but that's an understandable limitation, because in order to achieve these extreme postures, you'll need a specialized body similar to the Sam Flynn figure by Hot Toys, which is just a statue at this point. The back seat is big enough to fit a whole other figure on here too, so if you have any accompanying characters, they can totally hop in for a ride. And on that note, this Hardy Daytona works really well with other 6 scale figures in your collection, and this somewhat applies to the VTS Cloud as well. What? Of course this video is not complete without mentioning this guy. And because he's so tall, his inability to lean forward is even more apparent here, especially without the proper gripping hands. His legs are also a bit too long to fit completely on the foot pegs. 
But despite all that, this VTS cloud actually looks mildly okay from afar. Maybe because the OG bike used to be smaller relative to cloud. Speaking of which, here we have the true OG 8th scale cold cast resin statue by Kotobukiya, followed by the PAK Advent Children Cloud and Fenrir. And finally, here's the first class edition from the remake, also by PAK. Having both side by side, I'd argue that the PAK Hardy Daytona can definitely hold its own. Each version is worthy for their respective scales, with the Game Toys one unsurprisingly having more details. The Rider, on the other hand, is where Game Toys really starts to pull ahead. And one more for good measure. Here's the light cycle from Tron Legacy by Hot Toys. The sculpted posture on Sam makes the profile really compact. So there you have it, the 1-6 scale Hardy Daytona by Game Toys. Like everything else they have released so far, Game Toys had absolutely na nailed it. I know, thank you. Moving on. Alrighty then. As I eagerly wait for Game Toy's next dabble in this franchise, this Cloud and Hardy Daytona set will reign supreme as the crowning jewel in my Final Fantasy VII collection. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.